Do you ever wonder what would have happened if GTA Online didn't become the success that it is? I'm certain that it's the only reason why GTA 5 is being ported to the PS5 and Series X. From a business standpoint, I think they're trying to not cut off a significant source of income when it's still generating this much money. From a fan standpoint, however, it's pretty freaking annoying that we've gotten nothing besides the same game out of a single beloved franchise for the last eight years. Ten years ago is when they originally announced this game. I was still in high school, and if someone had told me that a decade into the future they still wouldn't have a new GTA out, and the only new stuff that we would be getting is out of a multiplayer mode with vehicles that feel like they were taken from Saints Row the Third, I would think you were crazy. But hey, looking at 2021 from a 2011 standpoint, I'd say it's been a pretty crazy future so far, huh? And one crazy thing out of many that we got was the announcement that GTA 5 was going to be released yet again for for the third time in a row now on a new console generation, and that it would be expanded and enhanced. What does that mean? A major update to the existing map? A new city, perhaps? Or maybe an entire overhaul to the engine to bring the visuals and physics up to Red Dead 2's standards? For a little over a year, fans have been waiting. It would be a lie to say that most people were patient, but this is the only official news that we've had on any major GTA release for a new console. And even if it's just 5 again, they even had me wondering, what are they going to change? What's going to be so expanded and enhanced about it? Well, we finally got our answer at the last PlayStation event when they showed off that trailer. Looks good, I guess. I mean, if you thought the game looks good on PC and you wanted the exact same experience on consoles, minus the modding abilities, or 5M, then hey, it's a dream come true, huh? I'm sure you've already seen plenty of comparisons between the PS5, PS4, and PC versions, so I won't talk much about that. I don't even know if there's much to talk about anyway. It looks marginally better, but it's nothing earth-shattering. Oh, and they included something else, too. Seamless character switching. You know, like the PC version has. Explosive action. I guess they ran out of stuff to say by this point. There will be much more, too, but once again, we don't know what, they never said anything. The most noticeable changes, besides the slight graphical enhancements, are unfortunately some really strange bugs that seem to exist in this build, which is supposed to be the PS5 version. Lester's chair is looking a bit different, that's because the model has duplicated itself for some reason. Finally, the license plates are neon yellow. At first glance, I thought it was just the lighting until these reappear in multiple other scenes with different lighting conditions. Am I the only one who thinks it's strange that they would release an official trailer with these visual bugs present? I think I'd understand it if it was an early build of the game's original PS3 and 360 version. Like in this shot from the first trailer ten years ago where the street Michael is racing towards just ends in an empty void because it either didn't load correctly or because they just didn't finish building this section of the city because it's an early build. But it's a very quick shot, the only reason it even stands out here is because it's a still image. Then again, maybe there's a reason why the game is now coming out in March of 2022 instead of November. They need to expand and enhance the game, not fill it with new bugs and leaving us all dejected and diminished. Speaking of which, notice how they seem to have dropped using the term expanded and enhanced? I wonder if they realized that calling it that caused everyone to assume that we're getting something more out of this than what they were planning. Even looking at how this trailer's been received, there's been a pretty big backlash against them over this. Even though I do think the game will still sell well because of casual players, Rockstar and Take-Two have to realize that a lot of longtime fans are not happy with this. I understand that AAA game development takes much longer than it used to, but I think that a lot of people still would have expected to hear at least news about something different. Instead, it raises the question of when exactly are they going to reveal a brand new GTA? We've still yet to hear from them in a Newswire post where maybe they'll go into further detail about what's changed, but so far, it doesn't look like that much is different. If there isn't going to be that much besides slightly better graphics and faster loading, then couldn't this have just been accomplished with a patch for people who already own the game on PS4 that then buy a PS5? But hey, maybe we should just wait for Rockstar to come out and list everything major that's changed with the PS5 and Series X versions of 5. Though it would have been nice if they had something like this prepared for, you know, the day the trailer was released. The trailer for Alan Wake Remastered was shown off at the same PlayStation event, and not long after, Remedy actually communicated with fans through an article about what this remaster is going to be like. They weren't vague about describing it, they didn't overhype it, and you know what? I'm interested. It can't be as bad as Mafia 2 Remastered, right? Oh, okay. Well, good luck to Alan Wake.
Bye.